Welcome to the GARTRAC Security Officer video training series. I'm your host, Jason Smith. There is a word used often in our industry that has taken on several different meanings over the years. The word is patrol. So what does it actually mean to patrol? Although it seems rather simple, if you ask 10 different people to define the word patrol, you are likely to get 10 very different answers. Your own definition of this word and how it relates to your job as a guard track certified security professional is paramount in establishing the highest quality of security work for your client. Take a moment to think about the most fundamental objectives of a job in security. If you thought of words and phrases like protection of people, protection of property, observations, attention to details, skillful identification, prevention and presence, then you are well on your way to correctly defining the word patrol. With that in mind, patrol can be readily defined as moving through, in and around a facility to make observations, as well as provide presence and protection with the ultimate goal of establishing a secure and safe environment for all. However, it should be noted that because every client and location is different, it may become necessary to customize the type of patrol in order to meet the unique needs of the job site or to satisfy the client's specific request. In order to become an expert with designing and conducting patrols, it is important to understand the foundational elements that are common with nearly all patrols. When this is properly understood, guard track customization of patrols for specific client needs will become much easier and more effective. So, what are the things that all patrols have in common? Well, based on our definition, we can deduce that the following basic functions are common with all patrols. First, is the detection of criminal or unauthorized activity. This includes anything that may disrupt the standard operating procedures of your client or any unsafe situation or code violation that is observed. Things like trespassing, parking problems, noise, safety, loitering violations, or suspicious activity are some examples of this. Next is the prevention and deterrence of crime. Adequate patrols provide an overwhelming presence or omnipresence of security in an area visible to both the client and their employees as well as the general public. Such a presence lets bad guys know that criminal activity in the area will be conducted at very high risk. Guard track certified security professionals are well known for designing patrols with this overwhelming security presence. Remember, the best crimes are the ones that never happen at all. Ensure compliance with client policy. At nearly every job site where security interacts with client, staff, or property, the purpose of a patrol helps to ensure that any client policy or local government code in place is enforced in a fair and ethical manner. This is the fundamental part of community relations common with any quality patrol. This is known as the public relations quotient of security. Assess, report, and record loss-causing situations or circumstances. Any effective patrol also includes the identification and report of potential unsafe situations. These may include chemical spills, broken safety rails, leaking pipes, unsanitary conditions, or anything else that might pose a threat to the safety of anyone in the area or expose your client to any liability. This is known as the intelligence quotient of security. Handle calls as assigned. While on patrol, 
You may receive a wide range of calls which demand action or decision making on your part. Being adaptive and prepared to effectively handle a wide variety of calls on the fly is a common attribute to anyone conducting a quality patrol. This is known as the management quotient of security. Test and inspect the physical security system. Mechanical security devices like lights, locks, gates, sensors, cameras, etc. should be checked during any patrol to ensure they are being used properly and are in good working order. Act as a compensatory measure. When problems occur, such as a power outage or other emergency, guard track certified security professionals will be called upon to stand at post and provide a safe, organized and flowing environment until help arrives or the crisis has passed. Respond to emergencies. When an emergency arises, the security professional on patrol is required to act. This involves responding in a timely manner with working equipment and knowledge of standard procedures to deal with a variety of emergencies that may be encountered. Quick and calculated action by a quality security professional can even be life-saving in grave situations. Finally, perform other duties as required. As mentioned before, the unique nature of different job locations and clientele means that we must mold ourselves to best serve our location and our client. Taking these extra steps helps ensure we are providing the absolute best service possible Remember, it's the little things that separates the Guard Track Certified Superstar from the rest of the pack. As you can see, there is a wide variety of responsibilities when conducting a quality patrol. With practice and attention to detail, the quality of patrol you provide to your client will improve over time and become increasingly efficient. Never miss an opportunity to take note of safety concerns or chat with employees and clients about their own observations and provide that omnipresence of deterrence that guard track certified security professionals are known for. Patrols can be broken down into two separate categories, foot patrol and mobile patrol. We will consider both of these in this training in an effort to help you understand the intricacies of each in order to identify the benefits and limitations allowing you to design the proper type of patrol for the client's needs. Foot patrol can either be inside or outside. If time allows, foot patrol is the best way to get a more intimate look at your surroundings. It allows closer inspection and attention to detail and a more direct visual presence to others in the area. Foot patrols provide an opportunity for interaction with the public that are more difficult for mobile patrols. This can be extremely valuable in establishing relationships with key people in the area and absorbing the overall environment that you are working in. Sometimes, the size of a work area or certain topographical or environmental factors make a foot patrol impractical. This is when the mobile patrol is utilized. Mobile patrols provide the luxury of covering a larger area while protecting you from the elements and providing space to carry extra equipment such as lighting, flares, cones, first aid equipment, and radios. It is important to note that not all mobile patrols are conducted with a motor vehicle. Sometimes the unique attributes of a patrol sector dictate that smaller modes of mobile patrol such as segways, bicycles, and horses are more preferred. These types of mobile patrols still allow for covering a larger area but also allow for more opportunity to interact with people and get a more intimate picture of your job site. 
please be informed that specialized training is required to conduct horse, bicycle, or Segway patrols. As a guard track certified security professional, you will have the opportunity to receive special training in any of these areas if you so choose. Remember, the purpose of any patrol is to eliminate the opportunity for an individual to commit a crime. Understanding the benefits of each type of patrol gives us the best opportunity to do just that. In order to help you conduct the most effective patrols possible, we have come up with four basic patrol principles that should be practiced with regularity when on the job. These principles are universal and can be used with any type of patrol. The first principle is to conduct your patrol in a random fashion. Never follow the exact same route during a patrol. Avoid being predictable. Don't be afraid to double back, take a different turn, or reverse your entire patrol route. Unpredictability is key. The second principle is to conduct your patrol with a random frequency. Never allow a potential criminal to set their watch on your regular arrival. Vary the times you patrol certain areas, including the times when the patrol is conducted, as well as the time between arriving in particular areas during a patrol. The third principle is communication. It is important during any patrol to keep others advised to where you are and what you are doing. This is usually done with your guard track real-time log entry. In case you are in need of assistance, time may be of the essence. If others already know where you are, help can arrive faster. The final principle is documentation. Use your guard track equipment technology to enter information right away. Remember, if you don't document it, it did not happen. This is always a good habit to practice. If we were to strip down the aspects of a patrol into the most basic function and ideas, we would be left with two things, observations and perceptions. It should be noted that being a trained observer and reporter is synonymous with our actual profession. This means being able to observe places, people, things, and situations with discrimination and have those observations translate into swift, appropriate actions. The guard track certified security professional can organize his or her attention and be adept at noticing detail while processing information in an organized manner. The keys to effective observations are 1. See a problem developing. 2. Give an accurate description of people, places, and things. 3. Be able to identify the indicators of deception. 4. Have confidence in your ability. Being an effective observer involves appreciating the benefits and understanding the limitations of your own five senses. An effective security professional is fluent in using these senses to the best of his or her own natural ability. Let's take a closer look at the five senses and how they relate to making effective observations. First, sight. Visibility of an object involves three variables. How far away it is, how big it is, and how much light it is reflecting or giving off. This is called illumination. Problems with sight center around two things, your orientation to the object in question and how you perceive it. Next, hearing. Be able to recognize and differentiate 
the following basic types of sound. Activity noises like footsteps, glass breaking, cars starting, keys rattling. Remember, if sound is generated, it usually means movement is occurring. Voices. Be able to distinguish between gender, accents, volume, pitch, and any other unique characteristic that might stick out to you. Motors and engines. These include vehicle engines, power tools, electric carts, or anything that requires a motor for continuous use. Even golf carts have a unique sound all their own. Firearms. Gunfire, fireworks, car backfires, or any other type of explosion is usually cause for investigation in making an observation. Smell. Familiarize yourself with certain potentially dangerous odors such as gasoline, methane, natural gas, or smoke from certain types of fires, chlorine gas, etc. Remember, the longer you are exposed to an odor, the less distinguishable it becomes. Touch. Observations made by touch can include the pulse of an individual who has been injured, heat from a fire, the crack in a large container, or the warmth of a recently run car engine. Always use discretion with what you touch and make sure you keep your hands clean. Taste. Never taste anything unless you are absolutely sure about what it is. Poison comes in many forms. When making observations, the effective security professional can take a clue or two from today's American fighter pilots. These individuals are taught a process called the ODA loop. ODA stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, and Act. In security, on any patrol, observe your environment. Orient yourself to the situation, weigh your options, and act with confidence. Because the skills of observation and perception are so important within the security industry, it is helpful to understand some basic rules that govern these two ideas. Consider these. First, nothing is routine. Because situations and people are in a constant state of flux and variation with regards to placement and activity, always keep your awareness level very high. Never let your guard down. Next, know what the people around you are doing. Are they running, standing, acting nervous, hiding, or using strange body language? Know what the people around you are saying. Are they arguing, gossiping, threatening, being disruptive in any way? Next, know where you are. Make sure you know your exact location, including direction, address, and reference points. If you need help, knowing where you are can make all the difference. Know where cover is. Cover is considered something that protects you from something else. Know the quick routes where you can reach cover and protect yourself if necessary. Finally, use what is available to help you observe. This includes video monitors, reflections in glass, etc. With a general understanding of these rules, you give yourself the best chance to make quality observations. It is important to understand that the skills of observation and perception go hand in hand. The logical connection between these two ideas is that observation 
always precedes perception. You must observe something before you can perceive it. Perception is defined as any experience that has acquired meaning. What does that mean exactly? Well, in biological terms, observations are simply stimuli being sent from the sense centers of your body to your brain. There, those stimuli must be recognized, processed, and understood. Therefore, stimuli are actually precursors to conscious action. Unfortunately, problems occur during the transition from observation to perception. Please be aware of the following. First, objects are not perceived as single items isolated from each other. Often we observe many activities happening in a single area. Rather than focus on the group, seek out the center of the activity to achieve the proper perception. Next, perceptions do not correspond with actual dimensions. Trucks, for example, are moving faster than they look, while sports cars are actually moving slower than they appear. Color, lighting, and size distort perception. Next, circumstances may produce stress. Seeing something catastrophic or horrible can alter one's ability to achieve true perception. Emotions can also detract from effective perceptions of events. If one becomes too upset, this can distort the perception of reality to that individual. Remember, we are all human. Emotions can affect both the people you are working with and observing, as well as yourself. Finally, stay focused. Don't just look. Gather facts and practice all of your skills so as to make sure nothing is overlooked. So how do you become a more effective and efficient observer? Here is a short list to help you practice and improve your observational skills. First, observe with all of your senses. Trust your instincts. Second, be aware of what you see. Focus on what you actually observe, not what you thought you observed. Third, learn to distinguish detail from generality. Focus on the small things as well as the entire incident in progress. Small details may make all the difference. Fourth, understand time relationships. When your mind understands the chronological order of events, they become easier to remember, record, and relate to. Fifth, learn colors. Learn what colors look like in dimmer light. This will help you make better observations regardless of the time of day. Finally, observe from general to specific. Move your attention like a bullseye target, moving from the most general outer ring towards the innermost center circle. This will help you get an organized picture of what's going on. Other helpful tips for patrols come from our brothers in law enforcement, especially in regards to patrolling in darkness. Keep these tips in mind. First, avoid silhouetting yourself while on patrol. You choose when and where you want to be seen. Be aware of how light shines and reflects off of you onto other objects, including the ground. Next, 
Practice light and noise discipline. Moving flashlights, rattling keys, etc. may give you away and put you in danger. Finally, play the what if scenario. Be proactive in expecting the unexpected. What if this door is hot when I touch it? What if there is a group of individuals around this corner? This will help you stay alert and be one step ahead of any confrontation. If you use these basic rules on a consistent basis when making observations, your own skill and knowledge of the changes in your surroundings will accelerate rapidly, making you a more effective security professional. In the next part of our training, we will be dealing with fixed posts. Fixed posts are a part of almost any security operation. They can be permanent or temporary, and many of the same general guidelines for patrols apply. You must remember that when at a fixed post, you are on display. As the center of attention, people are going to be watching everything you do. Without a doubt, professionalism is a must while on a fixed post. Here are some general guidelines to help you excel for your client in a fixed post position. First, know the mission or objective of your post. Working at a fixed post becomes more effective if you know and understand the general reason the client has you there. Second, read and understand your duties at the post. Your post orders will not only show you why you are there, but will give you a specific list of responsibilities you have. Third, post orders are on a need-to-know basis. Do not share your duties with anyone without a logical need or special permission to see them. Fourth, use the same light and noise discipline that you would on a patrol. Fifth, ensure all of your equipment is working. Once you assume control of the post, you are now responsible for all equipment located at the post. If it is not working and you accepted responsibility, it's now your problem. Sixth, brief your relief officer. It is helpful and responsible to let your relief know any unique situation that may be underway near your post. It could be a matter of safety. It may be helpful to have a relief checklist on hand. Seventh, maintain a retreat route. Know where you can get to safety if the need may arise. Eighth, be comfortable, but not too comfortable. Don't allow a situation to be created where you might become sleepy or inattentive. Ninth, keep a visible post. Ensure that others can see you from a distance. Tenth, never leave your post until you have been properly relieved. Stay alert, stay active, stay ready, and remain professional. In the event of any crisis, people will look to you for immediate direction. As a visible representative of your client, this is an absolute must. Finally, here are some tactics to keep in mind on any patrol or fixed post. First, be unpredictable. Don't take your break and lunch at the same time every day. Second, stay active. Be visible to those around you and always be willing to help or start a conversation. Third, Dress appropriately. Arrive in full uniform as prescribed by your employer and remember 
you are on display. This means attention to every detail, right down to your socks. Fourth, check your equipment. This includes radios, flashlights, safety equipment, and motor vehicles. Fifth, understand that response is tactical and thought out. Do not make rash decisions. When in doubt, contact your immediate supervisor. Sixth, be a hide and seek champion. Know every hiding place at your job site and be proactive in your decision making. Seventh, know the location of emergency shutoff valves and how to use them. Ensure that you can direct first responders if the need arises. Eighth, patrol in two modes, visible and concealed. Ninth, use your senses. They are your best friends in making effective observations. Tenth, trust your instincts. As we wrap up this segment of our training, let us reflect on how we defined patrols at the beginning of the segment. When we look back, I think we might all agree that understanding the importance and effectiveness of patrols will separate the amateurs in our industry from the true professionals. Strive to understand and practice all you have learned here. The Guard Track Certified Security Professional is a patrol and fixed post expert. And now that you are familiar with these concepts, you are well on your way to becoming Guard Track Certified. I'm your host, Jason Smith. Thank you for watching.